I, I think that we are called as Christians to transform the world and, and to make it Christian, to Christianize it, to bring the gospel to everybody and create a society in which God can be glorified. But we can't bring to the world what we do not have. Mm -hmm. Today, if you go into most churches, the salt has lost its savor. And I'm not picking out any particular church. I think this is generally true. In his work, Christian Smith, the uh, sociologist of religion at University of Notre Dame, has shown that across religious traditions in America, not just Christian traditions, young people, and now not so young people, uh, have no real idea what the faith teaches. They believe in something that he's called moralistic therapeutic deism, which is just sort of a general feel good, God loves me and wants me to be happy kind of pseudo gospel. And how we are supposed to go into the world and transform the world in Christ with that, I don't understand it. I think we have to first convert our own hearts and our own minds so that we can go bear Christ to the world. But the authentic Christ, the Christ of the Gospels, the Christ of our traditions. Yes. You know, this is, so I, t I am adjunct faculty at a local Christian college, and I teach a Christian worldview class. And uh, it's in their adult studies program, so the majority of my students are not Christians. And so I expose them to moralistic therapeutic deism, the, uh, Christian Smith's definition on that, specifically through an article that Al Mohler wrote on it. And as I had people articulate to me what their worldview was, a surprising number of them were like, I didn't know what my worldview was till this class, but now I know it's moralistic it's therapeutic MTD. deism. You know, I, Christian Smith talked about how MTD was the dominant religious view among younger Americans. And he wrote this in 2005, that was his first study. And he was talking about, I think, 18 to 29 year olds, maybe even younger than that. Um, but this is what I grew up with in the 1970s. I grew up in a small town in the deep south, in a, in a rural part of Louisiana. My family was Methodist, and the church we didn't go to was the Methodist church. You know, we, we would go like on, on Easter and Christmas, and you know, that, that was how we were. But we didn't need to go to church because everybody was Christian. Right. You know, that, that sense of, uh, Kierkegaard said in, in Denmark in the, in the 19th century, he said, when you have a society where everybody is Christian by virtue of just being a member of that society, then the society ceases to be Christian. Why? Because Christianity involves the subject engaging with God. You know, you have to be, he wouldn't have used this language, but you have to be born again. You have to have that personal commitment, a personal relationship. Well, in, in my hometown, we believed that prayer and, and church going was pretty much, um, you know, the white middle class at prayer. And, when, and for the black church, it's the black, black working class at prayer. And it didn't occur to anybody that there was anything different. And this is in one of the most conservative parts of the country. Now, I certainly would never want to put myself in the position of judging the individual faith of anybody else, but just thinking about the, the way the culture around us had become so saturated with the form of Christianity that uh, a lot of people didn't think they had to take the content all that seriously. It's, it's so true. And one of the things that Moeller points out in his article is he said that, that the prevailing sentiment is described by like a shrug and the word whatever. Yeah. And uh, so a few of my students said, that's what I want. Like I want to just be able to shrug and say whatever, that's me. Yeah, yeah they want to be affirmed in that. You know, I gave a, a talk in early 2017, I think it was, just before the Benedict Option came out. I gave a talk at a conservative uh, evangelical college. And uh, the first lecture I gave of a series of lectures was about the importance of spiritual disciplines in everyday life. And at the end of the lecture, students, filled the room, uh, a young woman stood up at the back, raised her hand and said, sir, I, I don't understand what you mean about disciplines. Why do we need disciplines? Why isn't it enough to love Jesus with all our heart as our parents taught us? Well, I said to her, we have to love Jesus with all our hearts. That's, that's where we start from. But if all we have is that emotion, then we blow hot and cold. You know, nobody can keep that emotion high throughout their whole life. So if we don't take that love and build it out into through disciplines into ways that we can instantiate that love into our everyday lives and ways in which we can hold on to Christ, even when we're going through periods of spiritual dryness, then our faith is really at the mercy of our emotions. Well, I could tell she didn't understand what I was talking about. 
at the end of the, that Q&A, one of the professors at the college came to me and said, what that young lady said to you is how 99% of our students think about the faith. They've come out of youth group culture, which is very relational, very emotional, Jesus is my best friend, that sort of thing. And they come here to our college where they're around other Christians who were raised like they were. But when they leave college and they go into the world, the first time they run into somebody who says Christianity is mean, they fold because they've really not, they've had no spiritual discipline and they haven't thought deeply enough and been tested, had their faith tested in, in ways that prepare them to be resilient in the world. I think, that I'm not going to pick on this college because I think this is how most Christian institutions, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, prepare or rather fail to prepare the next generation. Yeah.